Welcome back to Tide Talk with Web, baby. Anyway, sorry I've been uh, sick, had a little walking pneumonia, so I hadn't put any videos out. I'm probably going to cough through this video, so just hang with me. Uh, what we learned uh, from Alabama's second scrimmage was uh, there is concern. Uh, the defensive backs are struggling, um, and we're seeing, you know, what they thought. They didn't really respect Jalen Hurts and Tua and Mac Jones, and they need to. Uh, they're losing a lot of battles, a lot of 50-50 balls they're losing, and uh, the receivers are getting away and breaking away for long gains. Um, <clears throat> now, the, the from last Saturday's scrimmage, there was no stats released, but according to Hootie Jones, uh, the defense really got tore up by the quarterbacks, is what he said. Um, Hurts did a great job. Uh, let's see, Jones did great. Uh, so, and of course, Hurts did very well. <clears throat> I think, um, I think, Tua had actually two TDs in, in the scrimmage alone. Uh, here's a another quote. It says, uh, "It's pretty obvious that we." Uh, don't have enough respect for the deep part of the backfield back in Saban said after last Saturday's scrimmage, especially past the first team because we gave up quite a few explosive plays with the second and third uh, secondary when we were in there. <clears throat> uh, like I said, most of the groupings still look the same on defensive back. It's just they're struggling. They're just not the all-star cast they may were last year. We may struggle in that area, but we're hoping because of a lot of the offensive weapons we have, we can outscore people. Hope it didn't come down to that, but it may. Uh, some of that uh, running backs were hurt. We, of course, Boris Scarborough is still recovering. Uh, Harris was out. B.J. Emmons was out. So a lot of your younger guys like Najee Harris and Cam Robinson, or Brian Robinson, sorry, uh, were getting a lot of the carries. Uh, like I said, I've said it in past videos, and I'll say it again. Uh, Brian Robertson is going to be a battering ram for the Tide. Uh, if Bo Scarborough has injury problems, uh, as he has in the past, and goes down, I think you can plug this guy right in, and he'll be as good or not, if not better. So that's something that's really awesome. Uh, had some movement on the offensive line. Uh, we're moving a lot of guys around, doing some different groupings to try to see what is the best uh, spot. Uh, here begins kind of the final stretch before A-Day. Uh, A-Day is this coming Saturday. I wish I could be there. But I'm like 1,700 miles away in Arizona, so that ain't going to happen. But I'm going to try to watch it on TV. Uh, competition for the top jobs on the right side of the line. Uh, you had Lester Cotton. Uh, he had been spotted at right guard in some of the practices and uh, next to uh, uh, the tackle, which is Matt Womack. Uh, that leaves uh, Juco transfer Brian Elliott Baker and five-star freshman Alex Leatherwood. They're going to be competing for the spot behind uh, junior Womack. Another quote here. Uh, if it was going to be specific, Saban said uh, last Saturday, I think – Pass protection is something that we really need to improve on. Being more physical in the running game and getting more movement up front are things that I would say, not just today, but all spring, we want to emphasize to our players. Yeah, because all the battles begin in the trenches, and you win and lose in the trenches. So, yeah, he's right. <clears throat> uh, different things uh, Saban said in this story about um, things that need to be fixed, things that were good points and bad points. Um, a good point was uh, the second team made a, a significant amount of improvement, he said. Uh, the competition had got a lot uh, better against the first uh, team uh, reps and charts, uh, which we were encouraged in a lot of ways. Saban said it was good to sign for depth overall. Saban added, uh, bad. Like I said, uh, tackling wasn't what has been really good. Uh, missed tackles were suddenly an issue since we were playing against ourselves. Maybe the offense was a little bit better at running after the catcher breaking some tackles or runs, but I didn't think the tackling was quite as crisp as the week ago. That goes back to practice since we don't tackle to the ground in regular practices. Yeah, some of that could be just some rust we're knocking off. Another good was uh, balance and offense, he said. Uh, there were a few explosive plays in the passing game. The running game also took steps forward with big plays. There was an absence of a week ago, so that's good. So we're kind of me meshing there, I think. Um, bad, like I said it before, we may struggle this year. I'm not sure, guys. Uh, secondary didn't get a positive review for the second straight week. That's an area of concern. If there's no improvement there, we may have some issues there. Uh, but you got to remember a lot of guys transferred out of the program last year that were studs. So not having that depth does hurt. Uh, I thought we missed some 50-50 balls. We could have made some big plays on them. They turned out to be not great big plays, Saban said. Whether it was technique or players getting cut off, that can happen uh, moving forward. But we got to correct those. Uh, he said that it was good. The juice on defense was good. The tackling was crap. Uh, he also said good at special teams. Uh, the punter and kickers are doing pretty good. We know the punter is going to be good. 
kicker. Man, we hadn't had a good kicker since Tiffin. I mean, let's be let's be honest to God. We have not had a money guy since Tiffin. They've just been shit. Uh, we had three uh, freshmen and former walk-ons that stand out to the second scrimmage. Uh, Tua, I'm sorry, correction from earlier. Tua three three touchdown passes last Friday. Dude, killing it. Absolutely killing it. Uh, one of them was to a long one to Jerry Judy. Another guy said it was going to be really good. Uh, Robinson, running back, continue to watch this guy. Seven said, very good. But I've been saying that since he, he got here. I said, watch out for this guy. He was my dark horse for this coming year or this running back class. Uh, he's big and physical. Don't forget this guy, Robinson, is 6'1 and 220. He's probably going to pack on another 10 pounds before the season hits. And I'm, I'm telling you, they're going to use him in place of Boris Scarborough before, until Bo gets healthy. If Bo gets hurt again, this guy's coming in and going to replace him and do just as good or if not better. Uh, Foster was coming on. Foster caught a pass on the first-team quarterback. Trevon Diggs broke a tackle and gained additional yardage. Uh, this guy, uh, he's a sophomore from Clay Chalkville, had a second straight productive scrimmage after catching seven passes in Alabama's first one. Uh, he continued to be on track for a breakout year. The six foot five, two hundred and fifty five pound haul had been a standout in both scrimmages. Got to watch out for this guy. I'm just learning about this guy. He's coming on strong for what my sources are saying. So he's going to be really good. <clears throat> uh, some positions to uh, kind of watch. Uh, some swapping around, like I said before, the line. You had Ross Pitcher. Pitch Botcher was installed at center. Uh, he dealt with a revolving door at right guard. Uh, there have been four different players coming in there. You had Pitcher Botcher, you had Cotton, you had Taylor, and then Corey Curvin going there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bozeman said, we didn't have much switching last year. We're ready for any kind of substitution, Bozeman said. And it's really the same guys from last year coming to the mix. And you just have to build that match with those guys, and you have to build the scenarios and different things. So it's just a work in progress. We'll be fine. Uh, Saban did initiate a, uh, a shakeup. He said the first team unit didn't get enough movement up front. Uh, so he moved Cotton, moved to right guard, and replacing Matt Womack. And Womack bumped Deontay Brown, was assigned to Cotton's old spot. So we're switching things around. We're placing guys in place. No worries. I'd be more worried about the defensive backfield. They're getting their ass eat up in these scrimmages, and it looks bad. I've seen some footage, and they're getting punched in the mouth all over. I don't know if because of the quarterbacks – are that much better in the or in the wide receivers, or if they're just bad, we'll find out. But that's definitely an area of concern for me, and I think any Tide fan, because I think they're going to watch some film and they're going to uh, they're going to they're going to correct it. And it's going to be fine. Uh, another cool story I found. Uh, did you guys actually know Tua uh, Tagliavola, the quarterback, is actually a right hander? He's not a left hander. Now he throws it left handed, yes, and very crisp, very clean, legitly fast. Very quickly release, but he actually was never um, a left-hander. His dad made him that way. His dad, Gala Tagliavo, he's a power lifter, uh, 5'9". He's not a really tall guy. Uh, he switched his son, about 10 years old, uh, to be a left-hander and was constantly coaching him, coaching him, coaching him. I don't know if that's because back in the day, you had a lot of guys like Michael Vick, a lot of left-handers that really were good. You had Mark Brunel. Uh, you had a, pres- a plethora of guys that were good. I mean, if you remember Ken Stabler in the 60s, stud, you know, I think he's actually a Hall of Famer, uh, Raider great. He was lefty. Uh, you know, so it'll be interesting. A lot of complaints about lefties are, well, they don't have a fast release. Well, they wind up like a baseball pitcher. And, and they're all warranted, yes. And you have to change some coverages as far as uh, pass protection because of the way things happen. And when you get a release on a left-hander, the release is a little bit different, and even receivers will tell you that. Uh, matter of fact, cool stat uh, today, there only remains one lefty in the NFL these days. Um, like I said, um, Alabama, I had Ken Saylor, then they had Mike Shula, but they haven't had a pa- uh, passer throw of the, of the other arm since David Smith graduated in 1988. So that's been over like almost 30 years. So it's been a while. Um Alabama's true freshman quarterback does everything but throw a football with his right arm. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another quote from his dad, uh, Galou, and became fluent. He uh, grew into it, Galou uh, Tagliavola, told ALA.com. That's a crazy part about it. I never thought I could make him adapt to that as we were constantly kept putting a ball on his left hand. Eventually he grew into throwing the ball with his left. 
<clears throat> the fact he throws uh, left just makes him unique in the modern football, to be honest with you. Uh, investment in left tackles, uh, some people say, are the reason why there's not a lot of left-handed passers. Because, like I said, it's um, a different formation and you have to get uh, a left tackle. You know, so it's a little bit different protection. <clears throat> you know, like I said, um, the last one we had that was really like a super stud probably was Stabler, and that was in the 60s. So I don't remember watching him. I'm not that old, so I didn't get to see him. But I've seen film. It was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> Bryant is quoted as saying, I never trusted a left-handed a left handed crapshooter or a left-handed quarterback. Uh, <laughs> that's what he told Stabler, according to Keith Dunavant's 2006 book, The Missing Ring, which is a really good book. So he wasn't even sure of it. And a lot of coaches don't like lefties. Like I said, uh, the thing is, uh, his quarterback coach, uh, Vince Passas, in Honolulu, at St. Louis High School, uh, he said if there's a universal left-handed uh, knock on left-handed throwers, it's the throwing motion, like I said before. Uh, you know, T- Tim Tebow's mechanics, shit. Uh, and that was a constant criticism of him. So it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, Passas said he never saw... Um, that with Tagliavola, like it, it, there's no windup, there's no weird mechanics. It's just very fast, very fluid, very uh, accurate. One of the most accurate he said he's ever seen. And so um, he gets there and gets out on point, gets the receivers on point. So you don't have those long windups that are easy to read and, and pick off. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this uh, this coach also that was his high school coach also taught Marcus Mariota, and he was accurate. And but he said. Uh, that Tua is way more accurate than Marcus Mariota. So that should tell you something. That's a pretty cool thing for the, the future. Calvin Ridley was uh, noted as saying that uh, it does have a different feel when you catch it from a left-hander because, you know, he said, I've primarily always caught it from a right-hander. So he said, but it's not bad. Um, and his, this is his actual quote. This is Calvin Ridley's actual quote. It comes out weird, Ridley said early in spring practice, but it's all the same. You just have to catch it. Uh, I thought this is kind of a neat little stat for you stat whores out there. Um, this currently right now, uh, the leaves only in the NFL leaves third string Dallas Cowboys. Kellen Moore is the only lefty remaining in the NFL. Uh, and if you guys remember these, as I do growing up seeing these cats play, uh, we remember Steve Young, Mark Brunell, and Boomer Sias, and those guys are gone. You don't see those guys coming to the NFL anymore. Nobody wants left-handers. It's odd. <clears throat> uh, none of the 70... Last of the 70 quarterbacks drafted in the last six years have been left-handed, according to NFL.com. That was pretty cool. Uh, if you guys kind of remember, this is going way back here, almost 20 years. God, that makes me feel old. Uh, Kentucky's Jared Lorenzen and uh, Georgia's David Green uh, was right before Tim Tebow. They were the last kind of three big prominent, I'd say, uh, righty or lefties. Sorry, they were the, the last pr- primarily the big ones. Now, we do remember this. Uh, he didn't win a lot of big games and wasn't a lot of uh, great teams, but he was a good quarterback. Malik Zaire was a lefty for Notre Dame. Uh, I know he's still kind of looking for another team. I don't know where the guy is right now, but he was a good quarterback at Notre Dame. I think if he'd have played at a lot of other big schools, uh, he'd have been even better because he was pretty darn good. Like I said, um, a lot of shakeups on that offensive line, a lot of things going on. Uh, I'll keep me posted. I'm going to have a big video hopefully coming Monday. I'm going to try to break down a day. I'm going to watch the game and do that whole thing and get run through all that. So I'll be doing a big breakdown of that. Hopefully we see some great movement uh, on their offensive line and things get gelled. Uh, but like I said, that'll give us a good starting point where to go for them. We'll see the quarterbacks and we'll run through all that. So big videos coming soon. Love you guys. Roll Tide, baby.